the college basketball experience preview and picks episode four Saturday, December 23rd on the sports gambling podcast network is brought to you by hall of fame bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props and game lines. Download the hall of fame bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use that promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. We're also brought to you by game time, game time tickets, make the perfect holiday gift. Sign up at gametime.co. Use that promo code CFBX for $20 off your first purchase. Once again, gametime.co, promo code CFBX. And remember, as always, folks, to let it ride. Hey, what's up, you degenerate gamblers? This is Bill Burr, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, baby. By saying happy holidays, uh, ha- merry early Christmas, as it's a great time to be alive. You know, great time to be alive. I was at a live college basketball game tonight. It's fantastic, and uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, shout out to the chat. The chat's been patient. You know, just like uh, just like you are waiting for your fucking uh, old Chris Kringle to run down your fucking chimney with some gifts. You got to be patient, man. You got to be patient. I had a winning day. Started off red hot, hit some cold, hit a little, hit a little cool, cool off section, and then hit a little heat again at the end of the night. Uh, hope the world's doing good, man. Uh, if you're wondering who the hell you're listening to, well, my name is Colby Swing and Database Dad, aka Pick Don D. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under, where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists. And lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. I'm probably drinking too much and celebrating too much and not sleeping. Uh, would have killed a normal man, but nah. Now that's gone. The medical advice I got from that was, was like being hit by lightning. Pretend it never happened and get on with your life. Shout out to Cannabis Capper. Have Merry Christmas to you too, man. Cannabis Capper does a ton of great articles over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com. Highly encourage you to check out his work. Give him a follow on Twitter too. Cuz, we need, I mean, he's just great. We gotta get him on the show. Gotta get him on the show. I'm just a drunken idiot and I plan nothing ahead in my life besides my gambling money. You know? My apologies. Gotta get you on the show. I am joined. Yeah, I am joined. So I, this is like kind of, uh, you know, kind of just winging it here in a way, not me, but we, you know, money line Mac. So he's got an early wake up tomorrow morning. He's just, uh, he's, he's going up. He's got family obligations. He's engaged. You know, you know, you know how that is. If you, if you're married out there. So I don't even want to call this guy a relief pitcher. If he is, he's kind of like the Nolan Ryan who was never a relief pitcher. As far as I can recall um, of, of this show, he's just heat behind the scenes. All right. He, he's got crazy algorithms on cocktail napkins. When I first met him, I thought it was just some girl passed him a phone number, but no, it turns out he was just capping a uh, Murray state college baseball game. Uh, anyway, Give it up for host of the college baseball experience, Noah B. Nick. How you doing, brother? What's going on, Colby? Uh, yeah, Nolan Ryan did finish his career as a and as a relief. Yeah, yeah, as a closer. Um, Is that when he, mean, when he beat the shit out of Robin Ventura? He was a, he was a closer. I know a lot of baseball, but you're going like before my time. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I, will, I, I, will I mean, say, I, I was watching. I should know this, but I'm just, I don't know, man. I've been drinking. You know what I mean? I, I, w- <laughs> I will say, I, I did tell the guys that I'd 
be out for tonight's show. However, it's like so late, uh, like that we're getting to record this that it was like, oh shit, Noah's back in. Um, I enjoyed myself uh, a night out at the bars uh, with everybody back home, like all the hometown group. That was fun. Um, now we're here to talk Saturday's college basketball. Yeah, yeah, and it's not a gigantic slate. We're gonna recap some. Sorry, I've been, I've been out of the town too. And me and Kelly Lepepe were hanging. Uh, actually, no, really, me and the, you, and CJ Sullivan I, were hanging. I saw you grew a lion's mane. I, and I would, I was gonna wear it, but they didn't win. I mean, because I was on Colorado <laughs> State. That was a hilarious, hilarious thing. Uh, we'll talk about in a second, but youtubecom slash the college experience, folks. This is a clip later. Oh, look at it. Hides the headphones for you. <laughs> LMU didn't hit, but, uh, you know, for future plays, the lion is living. I was on Colorado state, me and CJ Sullivan. And we had moments where, uh, it was weird because the crowd was going for LMU. We started going for LMU. They were down like 17. They actually came back, took a four point lead. And uh, at that point, I'm like sitting there saying, I kind of feel like we should root for LMU because it's La Pepe and he's a fucking G. But then I was like, but dude, I kind of got like 200 bucks riding <laughs> on Colorado State. And he goes, Yeah, me too. And he goes, I say, Fuck this crowd. And I go, Yeah, fuck this crowd. And we started rooting for the Rams. And there we go. Hey. I'll be frank. I was out during the night slate, so I didn't catch many games at all. However, pulling up the box score, my guy Nikkei Clifford went off. He was <laughs> he was the cover boy for the article today. For that, folks, have underdog. you not checked out Noah's writing? I'm telling. I'm not talking about the cocktail nap. Cal- cocktail napkin's great, but I'm talking about the <laughs> article he's went writing. Five and one today too. Yes, <laughs> including a lock battle win against Pick Dundee, which we'll talk about in a second. But uh, yeah, I don't even remember which one that was. No, Noah's been writing. He's been writing like he's fucking Jack London. You know what I mean? He's just sitting over there, fucking just dialing up great fucking articles every fucking minute. Call of the wild, my ass. All right. I don't know what I'm talking about, but anyway, <laughs> uh, folks, check out this cup too. And by the way, uh, you can't see that shit, can you? There we yeah, go. Yeah, there you go. I mean, I, they, but well, I don't know if it's just if they were just giving it to everybody. Or so they, they treated just, or they, you well, and then you just, just rooted against that, them late. Or they just think that pick Dundee is just uh, oh shit, you can't. You can't. <laughs> it just covers up the whole entire one. Oh, I got a little <laughs> you, your damn, you and your damn green screen. I got the fucking, I got the, I got a flag in this bitch. I don't I can't show anything here. I got anyway. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get to cap uh, reacting to some games here because out the gate, I lost a lock battle with Moneyline Mac. I'll play his music because Bryant absolutely beat the shit out of Drex. So we had to bet this game. I didn't feel great about it. All right. But I lost money. 50 American dollars just pissed down the drain. You got to do it sometimes. Help the economy. Sometimes you ever wonder about countries, their economy struggling. There's not enough gamblers, in my opinion. I haven't done a deep dive on that, but I think I've scratched the surface. Um, Matt gets the win there with Bryant, but I rebounded and he rebounded. And no, I don't know where you were at with this, but UMass Lowell covered against Boston. Let's go. Riverhawk, baby. What do you make of any of those? I mean, it is, is, I mean, UMass Lowell is a team that me and you were high on in the preseason and yeah. uh, they had hit this kind of rough patch. I thought it was a great spot to jump back on them and we jump back on them and they win us money. Yeah. As simple that as outcome? that, right? Uh, yeah. Nice little win against, uh, uh, I mean, in-state opponent uh 
And it was probably a nice bounce back. I mean, because Boston had been struggling entering this game, uh, just like UMass. So uh, Covington with 28 points. That was a nice performance from him. But, no, I did not catch any of this game. I was actually sleeping from uh, uploading the YouTube and everything. <laughs> At this time. Buddy, you, you don't kind of sell us on. <laughs> I was uh, sleeping from uh, up, uploading the YouTube. You can just tell us. You went to sleep late as shit. You're probably watching fucking police, all five yeah. police academies. All right. Look, I was one. No, how old are you? 22. No, right, when I was 22, I was going to sleep at like five in the morning every night. No, no, no one needs to know <laughs> anything else. All right. Tell everyone to kiss ass and die if they give you shit. All right. Uh, anyway. Nice play there. Did you catch? I didn't bet this Vermont Miami Ohio game. Have you seen the oh, highlight the of this game? Under. Yeah, I saw the game. Oh, under. Travis Lexington Steele pulling a win out of his ass. Vermont is up to at the free throw line shooting. To, uh, it's a one and one. Missed the first free throw. The guy runs down the court, shoots like maybe a thirty-three footer. I don't know. Banks it in though. He was. And he wasn't trying to bank it in. It was not like a half court bank it in. It was like a couple steps behind the three point line, uh, accidental bank, but the bank was open in Oxford and Miami, Ohio got that dub. Uh, unbelievable. We knew that line smelled a little bit, but I did not think they would win out. Right. Your thoughts, make your free throws kids. Cause yeah, I saw that that was at the beginning of the, the highlight. <clears throat> Missed, missed the uh, second of two, correct? And then they just went right down and won it. If he had made it, it was just a tie game. But uh, and you would think a team like Vermont, you would think would make the free throws. Yeah. They're stapled bunch to the of, floor. Yeah, a bunch of white the, guys. The, the first thing you can do when you're stapled to the floor to make sure you're a good team is make your free throws. Simple logic. Simple logic. Uh, me and my, uh, my next lock, and I think Mac was with me on this, was Morgan State. Boom, they cover. They only lose by 14. I actually think, Noah, I had a few cocktails last night, but I do believe, I think I said JMU would win by 12 or 14. And that's why we should take the points of Morgan State. The correct one was 14. Got to go back and check if I actually said 14. It might have been 10 or 12, 12 or 14. I don't know. I'm having cocktails, but we hit, we made cash on that. And I'm telling you, we had a really good day. I like uh, the story of the day for me was the money line. I had a great day on the money line. Uh, JMU is still a force. I know it's Morgan state, but your thoughts on this JMU team as they're going to get an outright bid, right? Unless they, unless they completely shit the bed in the Sun Belt. Depends on how Michigan State's going to finish this season. Because, I mean, that's a good win. Um, but when Michigan State was hovering around 500, you're like, how good is this team going to finish off? But, I mean, if they're top half of the Big Ten team, that's one good win. Kent State, if they make the tournament, that's two good wins that gets you in. I mean, other than that, their non-conference actually uh, – Net wise, I don't know if it's going to. But be if they go, if they go twenty eight and two, twenty seven and three, some We've, shit like that. We have had some I discussions. Know. Illinois State, some passionate like seven years ago. It drives me fucking crazy. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. James Madison still does not have much room for air. It's a great non conference. They went twelve and zero, but uh, I think they've really only got two wins that'll. Uh, you can't forecast that shit. You go twenty. You win more than twenty-five games. You should be in the NCAA tournament. I don't give a fuck what conference you're in. Uh, shout out to Jeff Sharp. Says some of these guys picks. I plug my nose and just bet it. Morgan State was a perfect example. Some of us do yeah. too. Yeah, that's, that's well. I mean, you're going to talk about us with Baylor in a little bit here, but uh, yeah, that's that's part of the game. Part of the game. Uh, moving along. Sienna Brown was a fucking hilarious game. I know you texted me about this. Oh my God. Also, can I, this is a great, uh, I'm sorry, CJ Sullivan, my friend, stand up comedian, host of the bottom line <laughs> bombs podcast. Uh, I went to the game with him today. And when I arrived, I arrived like one minute into the game, right? 
I was actually there when it tipped off, but I was getting a fucking uh, getting snacks and shit. But so, concessions, they're necessary. Yeah, but I, I I went to concessions first before before sitting down. So I see him. He's like, "What up?" And I'm like, "Yeah, what up?" And he goes, "How about my fucking? How about my uh, my brown, brown I go my brown play. I took brown against Sienna because you said they're the worst team. And I go, "Well, I didn't bet that game." And he goes, "But you said Sienna was the worst team. There, we'll kick in their ass." And he goes, "What's what was the final score of that? I know I ate shit on it." And then I show him that Brown won. <laughs> <laughs> Complete misery from his, from, but uh, dude, this Sienna had like a twenty point lead in this game and lost. Yeah, yeah the screenshot that I sent you and Mac, uh, just because my text to you was, I believe Colby's quote from last night's show was, "If anybody is going to give Sienna their first win, it would be Brown." However, we can't bet like Sienna's just that bad that we couldn't put any money on it. And Brown down 25 at half. They come back and win the thing outright. Dude, I was uh I was on Hoops Peterson last night and he asked me that game randomly. And I go, you gotta take Brown, but don't take it. I was like, I don't bet Brown. <laughs> like I might bet Brown as like a dog, but as a favorite, I will not bet Brown. Um and I was like, Seattle's the worst team. I know the, the numbers. If you plug in the numbers, you're like, delay it with Brown, but I'm not doing it. I mean, theoretically, I have to make a pick when you ask me that. So I will take Brown minus the points because Seattle's an auto fade. But I was very weary of that game. Very weary uh, as Sienna covers against Brown. Moving forward. Oh, man. We had this one. Money line hit number one, the Panthers of Milwaukee. It was sweaty. It was intense. It was everything you want with why we gamble. What the fuck? I mean, you don't want to just sit there and cruise to victory lane. Sometimes you do. But this one, Milwaukee 85, Chattanooga 83. They win on the money line. We were on this one, dude. All three of us. This was a lock yeah. unity play here. This was After intense, though, dude. Yeah, right. afternoon game in Milwaukee. The thought was, hey, they're coming off the buzzer beating win. They're going up to they, Milwaukee. All they're thinking about is doing is hitting some of the breweries after the game for the night. Yes. Um uh, so I I had a couple of DMs on this one actually. One of so the they the school that I went to, I, I went and played baseball there. And one of the guys that was there years before me, and he actually was on one of the WBC qualifier teams, the World Baseball Classic qualifier teams. He played for Germany. He hit me up out of the blue the other day talking about college basketball, seeing that like I'm not, I'm on this show and he he thinks it's cool. I so if you DM me on on Twitter or whatever, I will interact with you until you don't text me anymore. <laughs> Which Does is, that include that's, sexual that's, advances? That's how it goes with women in my life too. Um, but I mean, uh, I, look, I, I get it. I was, <laughs> but, I wasn't always married and I, I feel he, like I would answer those two. He hits me up this morning. He's <laughs> like, Chattanooga is the play, right? Like we're, we're hammering Chattanooga. I was like, Oh shit. Like that to, to me, uh, is something that I think I'm not calling. I, I don't want to call him out, but like, that's something that I think I would have played two years ago before I'm betting college basketball every single well, day. Well, I mean, look, look, I'm not trying to, th the show I was on last night, they were on Chattanooga. Uh, but I mean, come on, this is all gambling. I mean, I get yeah. your point before I became get, full blown yeah. degenerate. Like I would have probably been on that side. <laughs> yeah. We had to sweat that out though, man. They blew a 14 point lead. They had a fucking 14 point lead. And when I, when I like final five minutes was like, Oh my God, it's like being yeah. trapped in an elevator. You know what I mean? You're just hoping to get to the fucking, you're just hoping that someone it's like you're being trapped in the elevator over the weekend. Fucking maintenance. People are out. Your phone's not working. You always hear stories about this. So thankfully I've never been stuck in an elevator. There's always, you ever, you ever just Google. I don't know if you have, but no, I'm a fucking weirdo. I've Googled like <laughs> how long have you accidentally been stuck in an elevator? Right. And you hear stories of like someone that was like, it's like a three day holiday weekend. They're leaving work at like eight or 10 PM or something. And they get stuck in that bitch until like Tuesday. 
that was like betting on that game tonight. Anyway, I don't know what the <laughs> fuck I'm talking about. Uh, Albany did not cover against South Florida. I think we took South Florida on the show, but I'll be honest on the picks page. I took Albany cause that line rose up overnight. And uh, well, I my didn't bulls, bet this game. Uh, my bulls can't shoot. So it's hard to get a read on them night in and night out. I mean, like some days that they're hitting. <laughs> they are a gamble. Look- they are they are a true <laughs> fucking are. gamble. Yeah. Um, it's a team that but- I want to like, but it's it's like tempting, like tempting your fate. <laughs> On the right day, they look fucking great. On the wrong day, yes. they look like Lemoyne. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. My biggest, well, I don't know if this is I, my money line plays continued on fire. I think this is plus 175, and I tried to talk money line Mac into it. George yeah. Mason, George Mason, money line. It's too late. Green wave shit out of here. All right. It's easy to see a tide turn. Let's go. They were down. They were down 13. They come back and went out right. What does uh, Cam Newton do? The fucking arrow. Let's go, uh, buddy. I mean, I think Cam Newton was actually the he was Superman. Yeah, right. Well, someone did I the think, fucking arrow shit. I don't I know who the fuck it was. Superman. Patrick Mahomes. I don't know. One of these jackets. Fernando I'm Rodney joking. in baseball does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and arrow. A lot of people do it. A lot of people do it. Right, um, dude. George Mason's good and Tony skin considering their whole they roster are, co- dude, considering like half their rosters at Providence. Yeah. They're way ahead of schedule way better than I ever imagined. They were a team that I was like, I'm fading in the first couple of games here. And Tony skin was part of that final four team with Larinaga. And I don't know if people remember this, but Tony skin was a <laughs> fucking dog. He got suspended the first game of the NCAA tournament because <laughs> In the conference championship, he got in a little dust up with Hofstra, if memory serves me correct. But he was a straight up, like, I would compare him to like Patrick Beverly, where like just a guy that's going to make you earn every single shot. Just, you know, I, I, I played basketball. You hated going up against people like that. They were just so good, so athletic, not necessarily the most skilled players. Man, George Mason, great, great play. I tried to bring people in, didn't hit, but I also stayed locking things up. You guys didn't want to follow me on this. Bob Morris covers against Cornell. I rode the points. Cornell can't play eight with Cornell. Get the fuck out of here. Bob Morris gets it done. Hi, how are you? It's a free show. It's a free show, folks. Shout out to Brian Sanchez. He goes, George Mason's now 10 and 0 when they win the battle on the glass. Let's go, Brian. Uh, I'm super pissed. Two I bet this. Charlotte and Tennessee. I mean, those aren't, those aren't bad yeah. losses at all. Yeah. Dude, I, I'm so pissed we didn't bet this because I tried to talk Mac into a lock last night. I'm mad that I didn't have the cojones to lock this up. Mary Mac minus the points against Bucknell. They win by 16. This was an easy fucking play, man. I'm super mad. I didn't bet this super mad. I didn't bet this. I'm also super mad that I didn't bet Corpus Christi against Texas because Texas won, but they only won by 16. And this was a gigantic fucking line. 23 and a half points. Damn it. I felt good about both. I felt good about both. Coming into yesterday's show, I was like, I can be talked into locking this. Didn't bet those. But the dog play continued. All right. Uh, call Did this you show catch any of that Texas game? Uh, a little bit. Why, Why what's up? Caden Shack and Shedrick only play 19 minutes? 19 minutes and didn't even, he, he only attempted two shots for Texas. I, I, I had the multi view on. Yeah. So anything and, and Dylan audio, did not start. So he's still working back from that foot injury too. Anything audio though, I wouldn't have got. So like gotcha. you're watching the game, but you're not paying attention to uh Yeah. yeah. Totally understand. Like I'm the same way with the three TV setup. You just have nine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a little different. Uh <laughs> 
the money line plays continued. The UAB Blazers. It was sweaty. It was hot. It was intense, but they got it done. 79 78 on the money line. This line. This line. The line told over. you. The line told you this one was going to be close. No, this went up overnight, man. Really? This went up. This closed well, at like five just, and a half or six. People, people bet Drake because they thought the line was low. Yeah. Yeah. But still. We we fucking I waited to bet the money line on this shit. I had I had a play on UAB with the po- or uh, with, on the spread, but uh, I waited for the points here. Load it up, cash the fuck in. All right, so at this point I'm like sitting there, I'm on fire. I'm like five and one, six and one. Hit a little bit of a rough patch here. First off, uh, well I didn't bet this game, but North Florida did not cover against Georgia by a half a point. Blue Kane getting it done. I was on Georgia um, there. Yeah, it was a tough game to cap in my opinion, but I I did bet on Montana State. Lost a hundred dollars on Montana State as Northridge. No, I might have to go to the Northridge game in like a week here because yeah, that good. was a, definitely a trap spot off of the UCLA yeah. game. That was impressive. One hundred percent. Northridge won by twelve. Nice win there, Florida. I didn't bet this game, but Florida drilled Grambling. I did take Grambling in the points. I would have lost this had I bet this. Uh, your Gators are playing pretty good fucking ball. Yeah, I had Florida here. Um, I was a bit nervous about it because if I had uh, talked about it more on the show last night, I would have mentioned that Florida did lose like two years ago this exact spot. Right I remember this. To like yeah, Florida I and remember this, Just outright. Yeah. So yeah. I was a bit nervous and I didn't actually bet it, but I, I was on the Gators. I, I think this team is very good. And plus that was a Mike white team. Um, shout out to Mike white. I still like him. Um, I do too. But, I do too. But I, I, I like this Florida team. They're very athletic and they, they, they attack the glass like crazy. Um, I, I, I think they're a player dude. Like I think they're definitely top half and a, and a good sec this year. I can't wait for conference play. I can't wait for conference play um, right around the corner. I feel like we were sharps on this. Me and Mac, uh, even though we didn't bet this, we didn't understand that line of Towson minus seven and a half against Nichols. So we yeah, took it was Towson. On Towson too. Yeah. All, all three of us took Towson. We should have bet this because they won by 10. Um, Somebody locked it. Was that Nick? Nick Tant? Might've been, might've been. Um, I did bet this though. We didn't cover this game last night because we didn't have a line on it. And there's a couple of these games that I, that I cashed in on, on yeah. that. That's why you get the SGPN app folks. But uh, Nevada, I wrote Steve Alfred again. Boom. I don't know what the fuck Steve Alfred's getting a Christmas card. They win by 13 <laughs> against TCU. And Noah, let's, which, let's have a cover. Which TCU is fool's gold. They were, they were due. Let's have a conversation here. Max not here. I know Mac hosts the Big 12 college experience. I love the Big 12, but I'm going to be honest. Big 12 is not that good this year. Not as impressive. I'll, I'll say that. Because look, you got I'll you got a lot of here. lemons. There's lemons. Check us out. TCU is not good, right? No. Kansas State is not good. Texas is right? not good. West Virginia. We, well, Texas is like better than the teams I'm mentioning, but not by yeah. But much. they got destroyed yeah. by Marquette, who last True. night you said wasn't very good. True. Well, no, I just said they weren't top ten. In my I opinion. think they are, but we'll get to that. We'll get there's to that. different level between Marquette and Texas for sure. Yes, but I still think you can't throw Texas into the garbage bin. The garbage. Did you already bin, hit Texas Tech? They're not good. No. no, 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 no. This is my point. Hold on. My garbage bin is West Virginia. Sorry. I kind of think. I kind of think UCF is right. I know Oklahoma State is right. I think TCU is, and I was high on TCU last year, right? I'm, I'm yeah, friends with the yeah. fucking athletic director. Yeah. I don't like throwing them down, right? But a spade, a spade here. When I've watched them, I'm like, this team's not that good. I also think Kansas State's in that mix. I'm just saying, the Big Twelve is living Iowa off State of their too. rep. No, Iowa State I actually buy into being pretty good. I think they're even better than Texas. They've destroyed some weak teams. I think their numbers are inflated big time. All I'm saying is you're looking at, at the top of that conference. Yes. You have Kansas, you have Houston, but Baylor just got Houston their hasn't ass played anybody either. Yeah. Baylor just got their ass whooped by Michigan state and Duke. Yeah. And that's another thing. I mean, 
ACC is showing up in these games. Miami drilled Kansas State. Yeah, but ACC's got some dead weight. I, of course, of course, we know that. But I'm yeah. just saying, head to head against the Big Twelve, they got some wins. <laughs> yeah, they got some wins. Clemson beat Notre Dame, TCU. beat Oklahoma State. Impressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clemson, Clemson beat TCU. You got you, you got these head to heads. Duke beat Baylor. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, hey. Uh, I'm just saying, I don't think, I don't know that I'm going to just say they're the best conference of college basketball anymore. Well, that was last year. That was the year before that was the year before this year. Kind of think it's the big East. I mean, but I was just about to say, we're going to talk about big East games today because it's conference day, but there are three best teams on paper are all zero and one. Or at least entering today. Marquette That's a good point. Marquette Actually, was zero and one. You know what? Maybe the Mountain UConn? West is the best conference. <laughs> I, Can we have that I mean, conversation? I think you can. I think they might get five I, I bids, think they, dude. I think they're deep Colorado as fuck, State, man. San Diego State, New Mexico, Nevada, Utah State, <laughs> or Boise State. They've got six teams here. Dude, they got they got a lot of decent teams. Wyoming's good too, man. They're deep down that. Uh, yeah. down that, that ranking, but uh, hang on folks. We're going to get to the next game here, but I'm just, let's think about that for a second. I want to tell you folks out there that the college basketball experience is brought to you by underdog fantasy. Underdog fantasy is a way to play alongside your favorite player, your favorite <coughs> fantasy players all season long. They got NFL, NBA, NHL, college football and college hoops, baby. Simply pick higher, or lower in your favorite fantasy stats and cash. in. Noah's been doing great work with this. Noah, I know you just came back from the bar. You're probably playing darts, shuffleboard, grab ass, something like that over the, like an hour ago, but what do you got? It, you know, yeah. you got All anything right. loaded up? It, it, I, no, my first time scanning the board here. Let's go to, uh, let's, let's jump on Tristan Newton. Uh, we like him. He's East Carolina. Oh, guy. I got you. I got you. Ireland. <laughs> See, that gave you some time to look at other shit. Yeah, there we go. Higher than That's 15 and a half great points. Hosting. Yeah, yeah, great host. Higher yeah. than 15 and a half points. He, he's hit it in the last four of his six games. Uh, he's hit it in eight of the... How many games has Gonzaga played? Five. I don't know. Five. Eight of the 12? So he hasn't, he hasn't cashed this number in five. So my math is off. Five of so he's seven and five, but he's hit in live math. It's okay. <laughs> or the last it, thing. It, I've always felt like a few cocktails helps my math. I don't know about you guys. Deutschers because pirates. Yeah, Tristan Newton is an East Carolina pirate. UConn came in with their filthy, their filthy blood money and bought them once NIL became legal. <laughs> but he's a fucking pirate. All right. And you sandbagging sons of bitches out there with your big, you know, hoity toity fucking schools that can just come in and buy players. Enjoy it. But we know, we know where that recipe was made. All right. That's like a great steakhouse grabbing a fucking grabbing, grabbing the shit from uh, grabbing the dessert from another restaurant <laughs> and just saying, Hey, here you go. This is us doing it. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but anyway, uh, yeah, folks, what are you doing? Use the promo code TCE SGPN on underdog fantasy, pick higher, or lower on two player stat projections or more. And you can make a lot of cash. I honestly don't think there's anything else out there that offers something like that. So honestly, when you sign up TCE SGPN, the promo code, you get a first deposit bonus up to a hundred dollars. Uh, and that's uh, and look, we're also going to give you, if you take a screenshot of you signing up, we'll, we'll, we'll send you a college basketball experience t-shirt or hoodie. All right. Sports gambling podcast. I'm sorry. Underdog fantasy promo code SGPN. We are part of the sports gambling podcast network. All right. We're back on the college basketball experience. Uh, so yeah, I cash with Nevada. But I ate shit here because Elon got drilled by South Carolina. Uh, no, can you talk to me about? Do you still? I know it's Elon, but they have Florida A and M on deck before they enter SEC play. 
South Carolina is going to be 11 and one. They're entering, 11 and one. Now they're going to be 12 and one. I'm sorry. 12 and one, 12, so 12 and one entering sec play. Now to be fair, their best wins are grand Canyon, Virginia tech and ECU. Right. And the ECU one, and, we all know is phony. I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> Sure. Uh, the, the Grand Canyon and Virginia Tech wins aren't bad, and they were beating Clemson for how many minutes of that game? Yeah. The, a lot I was of, in that's Morgantown what I'm saying. with Mac that night. I didn't really watch that game. I'm going to make I, a prediction. You ready for this one? Yeah, you're going to make a so, crazy prediction here. They're going to be 12-1, and one, and their first three games are home to Mississippi State at Alabama. Loss. At at Missouri winnable actually our first four games home to Georgia win I think that this team will only have two losses heading into that game at Arkansas against Musselman I think they'll lose at Alabama I think they're going to beat Missouri on the road I think they'll beat Mississippi State at home I think they beat Georgia at home that'll put them if that's true at what 15 or 16 and one heading into then January 20th Dundee a, a genius. Cause he called this in the preseason too. That's right. Lamont Paris. I understand. See, see money line, Mac, great guy knows his college hoops. I do consider him a sharp fucking mind in college hoops, but he is uh, against uh, South Carolina because the way the Frank Martin shit went down. And I understand yeah. that I would, I would February 10th. They might only have five losses. That's what I'm saying, dude. When I look at that schedule, I go, this team is going to like the for sure losses to me are at Bama at Arkansas. Kentucky. I don't even want to say Kentucky because it's in Columbia. I gave him that loss. I give him okay. that Tennessee loss. Yeah. You go into Auburn with in. you go into Auburn with four SEC losses. I think they could beat Kentucky too. At it not at Kentucky. Home in Columbia. I think they could beat Kentucky because I think it's a sleepy spot for Kentucky. Um telling you, man, watch out for Lamont Paris and those Gamecocks as I eat a bowl of shit with Elon today. Uh we also ate shit on Queens. I mean, we didn't bet Queens, but so I was on the Clemson, pick. actually. My Tigers. Nice. You bet it? No. Pick okay. Speech. Well, I think we all bet this. Murray State, they suck at. Wait, 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 wait. That's not the right music. <laughs> uh, they suck ass. I watched a little bit of this game. They're not any good. SMU is actually underrated, in my opinion. I was on SMU against Florida State. Uh, yeah. Florida Gulf Coast is horrible. They only beat Florida Memorial, which is not a D1 school, <laughs> by three in overtime. That's a really bad loss or a win. I'm sorry. That's a really bad win. High point. It's Canisius, basically a loss. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> uh, high point. Canisius high point wins by eight. I think that was a push when we caught on the show last night. Didn't bet that game. Uh, Maryland Eastern Shore lost by 24 to VCU. Didn't bet that. Cincinnati struggle with Stetson. I took Stetson in the points, but I didn't bet that either. But the Bonnies just blew the shit out of Binghamton. And how about this one? Florida State escaped Winthrop. Florida State suing the ACC. Forgot to field a basketball team, uh, <laughs> and uh, they barely escaped Winthrop. There, I was on Winthrop, and then we we had Baylor. We had Baylor minus what thirty eight points, whatever the fuck it was. Yeah, that thing cashed as they won by uh, fifty nine points, folks. That was the biggest spread. I said we'll say all year. That was the biggest lock spread wise all year. Yeah, maybe even yeah. next year too. The year before last year, they beat them by sixty four. I think on the show I said fifty five. Just because I remembered it being a really bad <laughs> blowout. <laughs> I mean, they did it again. They did. I mean, why? It, it, part of my logic is like, Baylor, why are you scheduling Mississippi Valley State? 
Like Mississippi Valley State needs to be scheduled in like Corpus Christi. You know what I, I mean? mean? Like that's that uh, as a uh, as a coach, Scott Drew. That's a perfect schedule. You go Seton yeah. Hall, Michigan State, Duke. Hey, let's call up the Delta Devils. Let's get them <laughs> after this. Yeah. We need a win, guys. Call up them <laughs> Delta Devils. Uh, you're right. Okay, now you won this lock battle here. I'm playing your music, not mine. I watched this pretty much the entire game. Marquette 81, Georgetown 51. You guys were right. First off, it was more packed than I thought it was. Also, Georgetown looked exhausted. I actually think in a one-off, maybe they cover that, but they looked exhausted. Even the fucking announcers were saying like the team looks tired. Third game on the road in a, in a, in a row. Well, ain't shit. Bad pick. Bad pick by me. You're the best. I'm the worst. You're good looking. I'm not look good looking. Whatever the fuck the happy Gilmore quote is. But uh, anyway, shout out to you. Marquette drilled him by 30. Your thoughts. Uh, the prop that we gave out on yesterday's show, Jay Heath hit the under points, rebounds, and assists combo there. Uh, but I did not catch any of this game. It was just a nice feeling. They had a hard time getting the ball up the court, man. Georgetown couldn't even get the ball past half court half the time. <laughs> yeah, that Ugly. was a nice feeling just looking down at my phone and seeing it was like a 25 point lead, four minutes out of half. Uh, I also lost $100 on Southern Indiana plus a gigantic number as they lost by 31. <laughs> I was a little <laughs> bit terrified. I told Mac this. I said, or was it Mac or was it CJ? I can't remember. I do so many bas- I, I do so many fucking podcasts, but I said, the only thing I'm scared about is I know Carbondale is still lit just because there's nothing to fucking do in Carbondale. They won by 31. I lose a hundred dollars, but, but, but to quote the great Frank Drebin, we didn't call this on the, on the, on the show last night because we didn't have the line. And I know no. that's convenient for me to say, but I did load up on Old Dominion. They beat Temple by 15. I took them on the money line. Boom! This Temple team is bullshit. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Jones sympathy play too. Yale, Kansas. We didn't bet this. I almost bet this. Yale, this was on the TV, so I actually caught some of this game. Dude, Yale played oh my them tough. God. They were winning with like 14 minutes to go. And they, they still covered, though, by a half a point. By a half uh, a point. I mean, yeah. some people that, if you got a bad number, this was a push or a loss. No, no yeah. way. No, there is no business to lose this bet. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fucking brutal. It's a terrible beat. <laughs> Alabama State covered the 30-point spread. They only lost by 20 to Auburn. And then Marist. I didn't expect co- that. After Alabama State was either. getting blown out by USC the day before. And what Auburn did the USC? I didn't expect that. Marist covered against Notre Dame. I knew we should have bet this. I knew we should have fucking bet this. So yeah, that one was Notre like Dame got the win, but that one was like screaming at us. But it was like, is it just too obvious <laughs> to me? Yeah. Chicago State got drilled by uh, Wisconsin. I think Mac might have locked this. Oh, <laughs> there's two locks on the picks page on this. Am I one of them? I don't know. I can't tell which row is which. Just how far down on, on the page. I don't in. think I did. I, I, I must apologize also because I got a DM saying, where the fuck are my picks today? <laughs> <laughs> I texted you too. <laughs> so look, uh, circle of trust here. My Wednesdays to Thursdays are fucking crazy. So my when while football is going on, I basically have like 30 shows Wednesday into Thursday, right? Yeah. I forgot to, to, to do the picks page and a bunch of games were played this morning when I forgot. I don't know. I don't I wish I had a better excuse, but I was just, a, I was fucking doing a bunch of shows and I've done that a couple times <coughs> on the Friday slates. You know why it sucked is because this Friday slate was like a Saturday slate. And it started most, early. Most like Friday most Friday slates, Friday are, like 12 slates are 12 games, games yeah. and they yeah. start at seven and they're all Mac and Miak and. Ivy. Uh, 
New Mexico State. Cover the seven. Let's go. Aggies. They're my darlings. I love this fucking team. San Francisco beat Fresno State by the eleven. And then I'll give you guys credit. I didn't this wasn't a lock battle. Yeah, I called this one outright. And they won. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh this was not a lock battle, but I did take Ohio as a pick. You and Mac locked up Austin P. They won out right against those Ohio Bobcats. Noah Beanick, Moneyline Mac, sharp. Sharp chatter. Let's go. Shout out to Demarcus Sharp. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I like that. What do you want for 21 tonight? I think. Uh, Texas A&M, man, we should have bet this. That line was crazy. We know this is a sleepy spot for them every year. They were getting like 36 points or something. They covered uh, Houston Christian covered. We got this pick, right? We just should have bet it. Um, and then I, uh, man, I wish Mac was here because I locked up Louisiana and they <laughs> drilled that shitty ass rice school. That's been fucking with me all week. All right. All year, all season. My raging Cajuns treating me well. Also, so what, in Utah, what's up? What happened here was is Harvard drilled rice, and then you were on the fade rice train up until now. <laughs> they finally got <laughs> drilled again. <laughs> I was dying hard like fucking Bruce Willis over here. Hans Bobby, I'm your fucking white knight. I was sitting over there just betting against rice every and I was like, what the fuck, man? This rice team. I watched that Harvard game. I watched that Harvard game. Anyway, uh Southern Utah beat Middle Tennessee. We should have bet. We should have bet on Southern Utah. We didn't. I did. If you check the picks page, the late picks page app for Dundee. I took East Tennessee State. Did you see this line? I thought this line was ridiculous. 17 fucking points. They cover. Now they only won by they only lost by 15, but I'm saying like I just thought East Tennessee State's decent. 17 points is a big ass number for them. I don't care where the fuck the game's played. Against another like okay, Utah State's a good program, but 17's a huge number cashed in there. Bellarmine got absolutely waxed by BYU. We should have took this. <laughs> these teams, Dude, these mid majors that go in the pro are just get shitting on worked. Teams. Dude, they get fucking worked. Um, and then I lost a hundred dollars. Yeah, I got it. My admit, next two like, plays. I so I <laughs> I I told everybody that Missouri had covered in five of the last six in this matchup, <laughs> and then on the picks page, I took Illinois. I'll be honest. <laughs> I didn't at this point. This game. Dude, at this I point, I was I. Yeah, I just rattled off all my wins. I was something crazy. I had a very good record. But the next two losses are fucking substantial. All right. I had a hundred dollars on Missouri and they got absolutely worked. I feel like from the start. From yeah, the that was start, not close at halftime. Either. Yes. And then my biggest bet of the night. <laughs> UCLA sucks. Maryland wins by nine. It was so chalky. That was the only concern with yeah. everybody I talked to was on UCLA. Uh, that was my my feeling last night. I said it at the very end of the show. Like Jameer Young, I think remembered last year. <laughs> he dropped 37 like thirty seven points. points. Thirty seven <laughs> points. And these poor Europeans on this team, they're like, the what Matha, the fuck high did we do? Graduate. What what the fuck right? did we do to this? No, is going, going out? On? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the only thing that saved me after Rams. those two, like, yes. Lock battle win against Mac. He's not here to defend himself for Le Pepe. And I'll be honest, Loyola Marymount has this guy, Will Johnston, that only missed one shot in the second half. He was so wet. He was so fucking wet. I can't believe they didn't dial up more plays to him. I was at this game. It was fantastic. Shout out to Frederick in the chat, giving us uh, 20 bucks. Never got a chance to catch the shows live. Hey, thank you, Frederick, man. Appreciate you listening. And I understand life gets in the way. You don't have to catch it live. Catch us wherever we're grateful. Um, I thought this was an easy play because I just I, like 
Well, I will say this after watching Loyola in person today, if they can get there, I feel like they're starting to get better, right? Yeah. Like they're talented. They're more talented than their record. I would say right now. I was, so I was handicapping this game for the, the prop that I gave out on Nikkei Clifford. They're deeper than I realized. Like yeah. they go seven, eight deep. It's pretty They're impressive. Seven and for... six right now. But remember, they brought in a shit ton of transfers. They lost Camp Shelton. They lost a couple yeah. other transfers, one to Maryland. Uh I think, yeah. Lars Shelton Lars was a bit of a Casey's blow, but... talking about Lars Thiemann, the uh Thielman, uh the Cal transfer, the big man. I actually think though, they could be a very dangerous play in WCC play this year with Gonzaga down <laughs> with St. Mary's looking a little iffy, even though, even though they're in fuck you mode right now, I'll say this. I think this year's LMU roster is better than last year's. However, last year's had been playing together for a while. So that's why they were beating these teams. This roster that LMU has moving forward. When we enter WCC play, I think I think this is a, a dangerous opponent every time you play them. And I think the more time they play together, the the bigger the risk is that you get upset. Does that make sense? Yeah. Georgia Tech beat Hawaii on the island. That was a Hawaii. fun game to watch. It's a fun game to watch. Caught this at the bar uh on I think I caught it on replay actually. Uh but Georgia Tech, Damon Stoudemire doing a good job in year one. Shout out to Damon Stoudemire. And then Frank Martin getting it done against Portland. 100 points on Portland, 178. Can we talk about this UMass team for a second? Moneyline Max not here to talk about how they're on the verge of their next Final Four since the Marcus Camby one. Um, what happened but, to them in, like against U- Georgia Tech? We were watching that at the very end of last night's show. I, like, I was doing the show, so I missed it. That's yeah, brutal. Like, Imagine they, they had, win that game. Yeah they had the game in hand. Uh, it sounded like they couldn't inbound the ball, a couple of late game turnovers. Um, yeah. And you, you go two and oh, and then you have Nevada in the championship of this Hawaii diamond head classic tournament. Like that'd be huge. Um, I agree, but no, they're, they're going to be much better than I expected in the a 10 too. like the a 10 man. It's not just Dayton like I thought it would be. Yeah, it, it's, it's got it, some bites. It's to deep. It. It's yeah. deep. All right, folks, before we get to tomorrow's action, I want to tell you that the college. Did you want to do game balls or no? Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's do game balls. My bad. I, I always fucked it up. You know, <laughs> I can never do something perfect. I wasn't correct. sure if we were just breezing through this or what. No, no, no. Game ball number one. All right. Uh, to me, if I had to give a game ball number one. I am going to say my first thought was George Mason, but I think I'm probably forgetting about a couple other games. So I was actually give me my first one, the George Mason, just because Tony scan did lose his whole team to Providence. I think he's doing fantastic. I think he's doing absolutely fantastic. And i love it. I love the fact they hired one of their own and the, like, I think he's doing an unbelievable job in year one. Tony skin, George Mason, first game ball. Who's your first game ball? Miami, Ohio game winner off the glass against Vermont. That's a solid team. That's a tournament team. So shout out to the Red Hawks. Second game ball for me is going to be the Maryland Terrapins. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that I fully trust you as a good team. I don't think UCLA is that good, but I don't give a shit. You went 3000 miles into the house that John Wooden built. And you fucked up UCLA and kind of fucked them up the whole game. So second game ball to the Terps. Who's your second game ball? Nevada. They completely destroyed and dismantled TCU in Hawaii today. Yeah, they're they're actually they're pretty good, actually. Steve Alford. You know, he had a good run at New Mexico. I feel like he might be better for these mid majors than he is with P fives better in the mountain West. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, Milwaukee is my third game ball. You needed a good win like that. It's the holidays. You got these, these so-called mocks coming in. Shout out to Bart Lundy and the Panthers for getting that 85, 83 win. Who's your final game ball, Noah? Uh, we're going to go with Austin P. Uh, an outright win, money line dog that both Mac and I were on uh, as they get the win over Ohio. Let's go, folks. Okay, those are our game balls. Right now, we're going to pick all of Saturday's action. It's a short card for Saturday. But that's because the holidays. But before we do all that, I want to tell you that the college basketball experience is brought to you by Game Time. Buy a ticket to your favorite event shouldn't be that stressful. Look, I use Game Time tonight, folks. Pull that, pull that app open. Typed in this promo code. Got these tickets for practically free. Uh, Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll be having at that very event. So snag the tickets without the stress. Game time tickets make the perfect holiday gift. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use that promo code CFBX for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Uh, create that account. Redeeming code CFBX for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guarantee. Look, Game Time. I'm gonna give them a nice plug, and not because they're just paying us to read. Shout out to this. So I have already used my promo code right on a previous event. It might've been, I don't know. It was, I don't know. I've used it before, but you use it at I, the Wyoming game. The I, no. Cause I got press passes there, but uh, I don't know. might've been last year's LMU game. I don't remember, but I, uh, I Googled before I even thought about game times, our sponsor, I Googled LMU tickets for Colorado state. And the first app took me to, or the first page took me to something where they cost about $78, right? And that was the cheaper one. There was a $90 one, right? I was looking for two tickets at the time, me and my wife, CJ joined us later. But I, so then I went to game time. I thought, oh shit, I forgot about game time. I loaded this up. I don't have the, the redeeming code anymore because I've burned it. Eight dollar tickets, folks. Eight dollar tickets. I was shocked. I compared the screens. I was like, what the fuck? How can there be this much of a difference? But there was. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know what it was, but I'm telling you, this is a true story from Pick Dundee here. That's so I uh, look, check game time before you check any other time you buy tickets, because I'm telling you, there are some sites out there that will fucking steal your money. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets. Win bigger by betting smarter this NFL season with Hall of Fame Bets, a sports betting analytics platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Research every NFL, NBA, and soccer bet with historical stats and data. Stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame Bets to craft more intelligent, data driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit HOFBets.com. Use that promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start researching, start winning with Hall of Fame Bets. All right, we are back on the college basketball experience. Shout out to John Sanchez. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. Yeah, shout out to the 163 people watching us live. It is 4.17 in the morning Eastern time. This is bizarre. Gotta respect that. <laughs> so the For you, show. it's like noon. For you, it's like noon, buddy. Oh, I'm kind of feeling it. <laughs> oh, that's, that's the booze. Don't worry. Ride it out. Ride it out. It's Christmas Eve. Rutgers, Mississippi State. This is going on in Newark. Not the fucking the rack where Danny DeVito is doing somersaults. Shout out to Mark Lim as well. Uh, check this out. How about this play for you? This line reeks to high heaven. Mississippi State's two and a half point favorite. I'm locking up Mississippi State and Chris Jans because it's not at the rack. Line doesn't make any sense to me. What are you doing here? Yeah, the cocktail napkins got this one at minus five. Um, I normally don't like to play Mississippi State away from home because they're a team that just relies on the three ball. But Rutgers offensively is just as bad as the Bulldogs. 
I'll take the Bulldogs here, but no lock from me. Mm, mm. I'm going to keep this lock train. I'll, I'll just let you guys know that the first three games are locks for me. Uh, Butler is taking on Providence. Butler is catching six and a half or seven. Shop around. I would encourage you to. You want a bold play, Noah? I think Butler's going to win on the money line against Providence. It's bold. Plus two, 10. I'm definitely taking the points. I'm going to sprinkle some of that money line. I know this place gets lit, but I think it's a huge letdown spot after the Marquette win. Thad Mata is an underrated coach. He's going to get that money line tomorrow. Casey's Casey's on it with me. Let's go. Let's fucking go. What are you doing here, man? So for what it's worth, I was also on the show the last time we picked the Providence game. It was Marquette at Providence. And I, I said it, and I mean it. I've learned my lesson a long time ago to bet against Providence when they're at home. Um, most of the time, that happens when they're catching points. Providence laying points is a different story. Uh, I'm going to take Butler plus the points. Uh, Cocktail Napkins only got this thing plus three and a half. Again, I, I don't want to fade the Friars and eat shit again because uh, they're a different team at home. But I do think Butler is a player in the Big East this year. The fucking Long Island shocks. He takes a coming. deep breath before he gets into his bit. They're coming. All right. They can swim south. They say the fish is swim set like the fucking salmon go upstream. The fucking shocks. They swim south and they win when they go down to Maryland. The Emmitsburg, Maryland. The fucking shocks. Rod Strickland used to be a Washington bullet. They fucking were a Landover, Maryland playing those days. All right. The fucking Sharks. Rod Strickland's no stranger to playing ball in Maryland. Let me tell you that right now. All right. The Sharks are catching 14 and a half. Guess what? Last year, they fucking beat this Mount St. Mary's team. Oh, Mount St. Mary. God bless you. All right. All that good shit. But let me tell you something. When I see this line at 14 and a half, I find this line despicable. It's pathetic. I'm offended as a fucking gambler, all right? As a fisher, as a as a fucking guy that's knowledgeable about fucking sea creatures, all right? The fucking sharks are going to bite their way and attack and do all that good shit. You know, they say there's blood in the water. The sharks come. I watched that fucking Steve Irwin guy. When there's fucking blood in the water, the fucking sharks, all of them have that shit in their nose and they come and they feast. And that's what they're going to do. Give me the 14 and a half in the fucking sharks. Sprinkle a little bit of that 750 on the money line and make sure you give your grandmother a kiss for the old uh, New Year's Eve shark party. What are you doing here? That was a lot of words to just say sharks <laughs> plus the points and money line. But <laughs> I think LIU covers this. I'll lock it up. Dude, this is a fucking it's smash a double spot. lock. Yeah. The fucking sharks. Cash machine. ATM at your house. If you know how to use it right. Uh, moving along. <laughs> so I go back to white man voice. Uh, move, moving along, we have uh, Detroit taking on NC State. I'll the never hospital. take Detroit again. Th wait, well, wait a second. I didn't know that they had NC State on deck. Yeah. All of a sudden, this the mood around the hospital changes. I feel like I should bet the fucking shocks Paul Ant with Detroit Mercy Hospital. Uh <laughs> Give me the points. I'm not taking NC State minus 23 and a half ever. Don't they parlay can be playing. the hospital with anything. They're going to they, fuck up that I know, parlay. I know. I'm not, I'm not parlaying. <laughs> but I'm saying I, I will never take NC State minus 20. They could be playing my rec league team that lost by 96. I think we can cover 23 and a half. All right. Give me the points in the hospital. What are you doing here? So I am going to lay the points. I they beat Abilene Christian by 20. They beat <laughs> Charleston Southern by 34. 
They beat Maryland Eastern Shore by it's 32. Christmas Eve. It's the eve of Christmas Eve, buddy. All right. <laughs> but <laughs> Detroit Mercy has no pulse. They haven't even well, covered a fucking game, let alone win one. Fair, fair. Wait, well, I'm gonna talk to this Mario guy. Can't bet the Sharks or Detroit. Hold on. Let me throw Mario out the stick. Let me, let me throw out the stick for a second. Mario, I, I get the Detroit play, but Long Island has won Long us Island's more been money. An ATS yes, Long Island has been a fucking darling of ours. Yeah, he does. Colby does the bit, but I mean, the Sharks have been very profitable. So far. yes, I'm saying, come <laughs> on, buddy, come <laughs> on. And uh, I see the chat. They're with me with the Sharks. Yeah. I can't fucking wait to do this show. Well, actually, we're not doing a show tomorrow night, folks. <laughs> by the way, because there's no games on on Sunday. I don't so. know. I mean, I, I take pride in TCE covering every game of the entire season. I might do a five minute show picking the three games. Do it. I encourage you to do it because because I'll be drunk. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't believe I'll be doing anything tomorrow night. Tonight was go. my fun night. <laughs> there we go. That, that's why we pay you the big bucks. Uh Toledo is catching four and a half at West Virginia. Uh no. <laughs> <laughs> this thing was six and a half. It opened. Six I don't and give a, a shit. Uh, Toledo just lost by like thirty to Vermont. Yeah. I actually think. I actually think like. I trust Toledo's roster and continuity better than West Virginia's right now. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll give me Toledo plus the points. Sprinkle the money line. I might bet this. There's a solid chance I might bet this. What are you yeah, doing here, you have to, you, I mean, I'm on Toledo too. Like, sorry, Mac, but the Coliseum was empty <laughs> against yeah. Radford. Um, and so I, is your soul, not, Mac, after this season. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not encouraged that the build, the building's going to be full here. Um, and like you said, I trust Toledo on the bounce back more than West Virginia. Like West Virginia, the last two games, like you, you could have told yourself, hey, we're getting. Kirk Rees a back for this game. Let's let's go, boys. Like we're, we're let's beat UMass. They lose the UMass, yeah. but they got their their two guys back. But Raquan Battle was sick, so that was the excuse for the UMass game. Now they have all three of their guys for Radford. Let's go, guys. Let's let's go beat the Highlanders. They lose on yeah. a game winner against Radford. So now, what do you say to yourself? Let's go beat yeah. Toledo. Let's go. Yeah. Let's, this is fringe I'm on lock potential, man. This is fringe lock. I might bet this tomorrow. Obi yeah, Bryant. just because there's not many games on the slate, this is one of my locks. Ooh, I'm locking up the Rockets. I think they win it out. Rocket man. It's not Elton John. Rocket it's man. Phoenix. There we go. Obi Bryant, by the way, saying JMU, Utah, Troy for football tomorrow. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Colby? Look, Colby games? Do you see what I did? I fucking was all over South Florida. Guess what was on tonight? Georgia Tech money line. Air Force is the play. Northwestern is the play. And yes, you do have one right with Troy. Uh, subscribe to the college football experience. Um, this is the stinkiest line of the day, in my opinion. Penn is only laying two and a half at the moving company known as Ryder. What? I know. I know, like. Ryder just had a big time win out, right? What the fuck is this line, Noah? I don't know what to tell you. I love Penn. I do too. Uh, Let's lock it. Yeah, this is a lock. Quaker Oats for everybody. Let's go. Ryder just beat Delaware as a 10 point as, dog on the money yeah, line. As a double digit dog on the money line. No what last the fuck game. are we missing here? Penn's offense is legit. They're top 100 in effective field goal percentage and offensive rebounding and three point percentage. Ryder's defense is absolute shit. It like is a stinky ass play, though. Why is oh, that yeah, line sure. two and a half? Why I is it two know. and a half? It should be I mean, like look, six and a half. I mean, just looking at Penn, they've lost two road games this season. They're only two. They've lost their only two road games this season. <laughs> they lost the St. Joe's and they've lost they lost the Maryland Eastern Shore in overtime, 83 to 80. That's why you're getting this low line. I I still think uh, Penn's better than Ryder. No one's gonna be at that fucking game. <laughs> yeah. 
home court here. doesn't matter. Old miss is taking on Southern miss. It's not in Hattiesburg as I once thought on the SGP show. It's in Belux Biloxi Biloxi. I don't know how the fuck to pronounce this thing. Biloxi. Yeah. It's all Mississippi. Everyone's shit faced. All right. Uh, yeah. Did, I mean, is a, this game is awesome for baseball. I I really haven't paid attention uh, for and football. The crowds well, for basketball. Football. Yeah, I, yeah, I haven't paid attention for the basketball crowds, but this this atmosphere is lit for baseball games. I'm just gonna do the system play rival. Give me Southern Miss plus the ten and a half. Sprinkle a little bit on that plus four fifty money line. They hate each other. They hate each other. I know Southern Miss has, is six and five. They're not that good this year. I still don't give a shit. Give me the points. Sprinkle a little bit on the money line. What are you doing here? Yeah, I mean, my narrative around Ole Miss is that they win close games, but lately they've been actually pulling away from some teams. Twenty-one point win against Troy, ten point win against Cal, um, and eleven point win against Mount St. Mary's. But I like Southern Miss here, and you guys are not as high on him as I am. But Curbelo's a player, like a talented player for a Southern Miss team. The last game, uh, I'm pulling it up now, he had 13 points in 20 minutes. He had six assists with six rebounds. Like that's a good game for playing half the game's minutes in your first game back from not playing the entire season. I, I think he's a difference maker on this team. Uh, I, I just think he's a high major player that transfers down because he just wants to play ball. Give me the Golden Eagles. I think they Let's cover go. the number. I mean, this might be lock worthy too. UT Arlington's catching seven and a half at North Texas. I think this is like a three point spread. It should be. It's seven yeah. and a half. North Texas should- is another team that I fear fading when they're at home. I definitely love to fade them when they're away from home because they're a team that also they struggle offensively. But uh, UT Arlington's Philip Russell, I said this the last game they played, uh, he's a three time transfer. He comes over from St. Louis via Southeastern, uh, via SEMO. Um, this is his third game of the season. He dropped 28 points on Air Force and then 18 and seven assists against Texas Tech. This before Russell, who's a junior, was an all underclassman front uh, backcourt. Now you got a junior point guard heading this thing. I like the Mavs. I do. And I'm if locking you're locking it, thing. I'll lock it. Hey, hey, this is a three point game last year, and I feel like this UTA team might be better than last year. North Texas damn sure isn't as good as last year. <clears throat> I'm locking it up. Sprink the, sprinkle the money line with the Mavericks here. I'm right there with you. And I know the locks are flowing. We only have a certain amount of games. So let this and, next one flow. It, and don't What's take up? these games for granted because we'll have a couple of days without games at all. Yeah. Yeah. Load up. Uh, Xavier's only laying three and a half against Seton Hall at the Sinta Center. Fuck out of here. I'm laying the three and a half with Xavier. Seton Hall just beat UConn. They've been knee deep in pussy all week. All right. Easy play. I know everyone might be on it. I don't give a shit. What are you doing here? I so the cocktail napkin says this is a pick 'em. I'm right there with you in saying this is just a letdown after the UConn win. I'm not betting it because I don't like the Xavier team, but I will lay the points with the Musketeers. Kennesaw State's taking on UNC Asheville. Asheville's laying four and a half. So it's a letdown spot potentially for Asheville winning as a double digit dog. However, I'm going to lay the four and a half with Asheville. I think they're getting their shit together a little bit, not betting this game though. What are you doing here? Yeah, I'm right there with you. I'm laying it with uh, Asheville. I don't know what was wrong with them early on this season, but that win against App State was pretty damn good. Uh, and Kennesaw, I just think, <clears throat> I, I think they're a solid team, but I don't think they have anybody to match up with Pember if Pember's going at full strength. So, Give me Asheville. Arizona's laying seven to Florida Atlantic in Game Las Vegas. Day. I say fuck you, Arizona. I am locking up FAU. 
I thought Bama should have covered you tonight. They didn't. I'm doubling down. Give me the Owls plus seven. Sprinkle that plus 240 on the money line. What are you doing here? So I I actually want to, if I can spit out my thoughts, I actually want to talk about this game a little bit because I'm hemming and hawing. Um, Cocktail napkin, for what it's worth, has it at plus six, which I think that's right at the number. Um, I think both of these teams are very similar. Uh, both of them can win in multiple different fashions of the game. However, I did watch Florida Atlantic against Illinois, and I did watch Arizona against Alabama, and Vlad Golden got into foul trouble in a big game and a big stage against Illinois, and it killed this Owls team. Um, Balo fouled out the entire front court of Alabama. I'm nervous, uh, but I do like, FAU in this game catching points. I think this, I know the cocktail napkin says it's six. I think it should be closer than that. Um, I think the Owls, they need this game more than Arizona. Arizona also, th- this is another point that I wanted to touch on. Arizona in a 14 day span, Wisconsin, Purdue, Alabama, Florida Atlantic. And this one's right before Christmas, not on campus. They haven't been to campus and played a game since that Wisconsin game 14 days ago. FAU, their best win on their resume right now <clears throat> is in neutral against Texas A&M. I think an Arizona win would do wonders for them. I think it would almost, if you don't blow up in conference play in the American, it solidifies a tournament team. Uh, I think they need this game. Give me the Owls. I think they could win it outright too. No, that makes a lot of sense. I think it's more, and I I do think Arizona fans will be there, but I still think, I think Arizona, I think they FAU plays a similar game. They can lock them down a little bit better than uh, some of the opposing teams that Arizona's faced. Definitely take the points, sprinkle the money line. Maybe, maybe Arizona wins it, but I think it'll be by four or five, something like that. For, Um, For what it's worth, I do actually think this is a track meet. I don't know if FAU can really lock down the Wildcats. I didn't I'll say lock them down in uh, wait, 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 wait. I didn't say lock them down in general. I said okay. I think I, they can lock them down a little bit better than some of the other teams they right. faced recently. Um yeah, I Eastern think this Kentucky. is in the eighties. I really do. I think I think it's a high scoring game. Yeah. Eastern Kentucky is getting twenty four and a half against Bama. Give me the points, but I'm not betting it. What are you doing here? Uh cocktail napkin likes the colonels. Plus 21 and a half. I don't know why. <laughs> Alabama off the, the Arizona loss. I feel like I got to be honest. I thought it was a little steep. I thought it should have been like 18. Don't you think the Crimson Tide will just pummel them after the Arizona loss? Maybe, but I think EKU, I mean, I know they're not as good as normal, but I still feel like they're decent. Like they have some talent on the roster, but they should be better than what yeah, they are. Yeah, right I agree. They I were agree. Uh, a sun favorite. Um, I agree. I'm on Alabama. Uh, Vanderbilt is catching 16 and a half or 17 at Memphis. I'm taking the points here. I think Memphis, I don't like Penny when he's like a 20 point favorite or 16 <laughs> or 17 point favorite. I'll be honest. I love Penny. I think he's, I think he's actually underrated. I think he gets a bad rap because he's a former player who's a coach, uh, and a, a former NBA superstar that's a coach. And I think everyone thinks that you can't coach because of that. I'm not ready to say that. I think it's unfair to the, to the, the athlete sometimes. And this is a perfect example. You have to learn how to coach. Plenty of other coaches will tell you that their first couple of years, they're learning things. And also when you add in all the shit that happened with Wy- James Wiseman and all that other shit, I think he's doing a damn good job. I think he's doing a fine job. Uh, I think that stereotype is, is uh, off in my opinion. Like uh, they just throw him in there and say, Oh, he doesn't know how to coach. I'm not buying into that shit. Uh, however, I think it's just too much for an in-state battle. Give me the points of Jerry Stackhouse. I'm going to lay it with the Tigers. I don't think uh, Commodores have a pulse right now. I, re- I really don't. Like, I mean, you lose they by 13 stop. at home to San Francisco. You lose by 22 to Texas Tech. You lose by you lose to Western Carolina on your own floor. It's tough. Like, are they even healthy? Like, that's the other thing. They haven't played with a solidified lineup. Like, there was a crazy stat because I actually sat down and watched the Western Carolina game, sweating out that money line that I had on the Catamounts. 
<clears throat> the broadcast showed that Vanderbilt hasn't played with the same lineup back to back games. Um, That's insane. Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, Still too many though. I feel like Memphis, whenever they're a big favorite, I feel like they always like win by like eight or 10. I don't know. I'm going to lay it here. Something's telling me that the Tigers just blow them up. Villanova is laying 12 and a half or 13. I'd see more 12 and a half than I do 13 though. Right now uh, against DePaul. Give me DePaul. <laughs> I don't, I, I know that's a crazy take. <laughs> Give me DePaul after you just won at Creighton. I don't feel good about it. System play. Give me DePaul. Don't bet this. What are you doing here? Yeah, but I don't feel good about DePaul either. Uh, I haven't <laughs> I felt good about the Paul since fucking Mark McGuire. <laughs> All right. I lost my double digits to Northwestern in an inner city battle or whatever that you'd think they'd get up for. Uh, I like, uh, I don't love it, but I'm going to take, I'm going to lay the points with Nova. I think uh, this team, it's weird, but outside of Philly, they've been good. It, I can't explain it, but that's what it is. Da- Daniel brings up a good question. What do you feel more better? Like, what do you feel better about Vandy covering Memphis or DePaul covering Villanova? <laughs> I actually think I, I think, I think it's Vandy for me. I, I, I think it's DePaul for me. I, I like Memphis <laughs> the more, more than I like Villanova to go in there and win by 14. Villanova Duquesne. is just the spot like coming off the Creighton <laughs> win, but it's the same trip. They're going from Omaha to Chicago. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Duquesne's laying three and a half. Wait, is this actually at Santa Clara? Is this in some fucking. No, this is in Vegas or yeah. uh, it is Vegas. It's Vegas. Paradise. Yeah. Vegas. Yeah. Duquesne's laying three and a half. No, give me Santa Clara and Ch- sorry, CJ Sullivan, Duquesne graduate. But I think, uh, yeah, what you got against me and him like dude. inner city Pittsburgh colleges. Come on. I know. Let's give go. We should, we should. I'm laying dude. the points with the Dukes. Oh, are you? Yeah. It was the Dukes. It Santa was Santa the clear. Dukes. I, I want to like the Broncos here, but they've lost five of their last six, and they just lost to San Jose, which is a, a weird. Duquesne a weird has point. never been to Las Vegas, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all over Santa Clara. Lock it up. <laughs> UConn's laying ten and a half against St. John's. Lock. Lock. I love you, Rick Petito, but I can't go you here. I can't go with you here. Uh Casey brings up a good point. Santa Clara did lose by 17 to New Mexico the last time in Vegas. Fair, but they've been to Vegas already. That's an advantage. <laughs> True. Maybe. Uh it was New Mexico. You're right, Casey. Uh Yukon laying the ten and a half. Sign me up. <laughs> Is this too chalky? I don't give a shit. I'm betting it. I'm betting it. What are you doing here, Noah? You're going against your guy, Slick Rick. Yeah, I think they're gonna maybe get UConn in in Queens or Madison Square Garden, wherever the fuck the game is. No, nope. uh, I am taking the points here. I think this is a lock. Cocktail really? napkins got this at nine and a half. Hold on, make Clinging. it make sense for me. You know I love betting Rick Pitino. Yeah, clinging with the foot injury. I don't know if you saw that, but he exited the last game early, um, and they're saying that it's a sprained ankle. He, on that foot, was the preseason injured foot, and then he had turf toe on the other foot during the season. He has not been 100% at all so far this season. I think that they want him to be – as healthy as possible going into the stretch run to finish off the season. And personally, like I, I hate to get this deep. I normally don't, but I think it's a good point. Like this is an NBA prospect and you, you talk about some of these guys and I think he's already won a national championship. What else does Klingon need to do? When you like, say you talk about some of these guys, what he's really trying to say is pick Dundee. You call a lot of these guys pussies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I think them without Klingon is without their best guy to uh, hinder uh, Joel Soriano, who I think is the most important player for the Johnnies. Um, I just think that there's 
a couple of questions about UConn. There's a couple of holes that I can poke here. They already lost. They lost this game last year when they lose uh, when they lost it early in the Big East. It kind of had a trickle effect. Their first loss was at Xavier. Then they lost the game right after that, the Providence. Then their other losing streak, they had a three-game losing streak. St. John's beat them in that as well. Uh, St. John's beat them at, uh, where was this game played? Uh, UConn hosted it, but I don't know what building because they got the two. Uh, they played this in the XL Center. And St. John's beat them. The I'm on the Johnnies plus the points. I think they might even be able to win it up. My boy, Slick Rick yeah, Patino. Your guys. Dundee rolling with old ECU. Love with Tristan Newton. Let's go. Yeah, and for... Uh, What's up? And for Casey Riley, I don't know. Like I'm stumbling over my words tonight, but that was the point of the Tristan Newton pick earlier on the underdog. Without Klingon, he's the guy points rebounds assists. i just think momentum it's, in that building me. man i don't think like i love rick patino i think he's gonna make them a winner i don't think they're prepared for the momentum in that building i do think it'll be sold out i think it'll be ready to roll i don't i, I don't care if they're on their backups i think the momentum of that building is something saint john's is not you have to you have to get good and you know they haven't been good enough to to prove to me that they can win on the road at that place like that so i like what robert martin says here from canada by the way who we all i don't know if you want to look at the youtube comments but he always goes from canada love it yeah hey. shout, uh, out. shout out to canada love Canada. without without clinging it might be more of a coaching matchup than anything that decides this thing I, you're gonna I, take the crowd it's the crowd man you're it, gonna it's, take early over look over great teams can win in hostile environments st john's sorry, is not great Doc. yet I'm sorry, Daniel. No, it doesn't. It goes to Rick. Yeah, I do agree with that. It goes, it goes to Rick Patino. But I think we, I think we take. Uh, Hur- Hurley's a good coach, but are you, are you comparing him to Rick Patino? He's in the fucking Hall of Fame. What are we talking about here? No, 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 no. <laughs> We're not wrong. Rick Patino has won national championships at. It can't be. How, it's not an yeah, arguable. How topic. many different fucking places? <laughs> he took Providence deep. Would they go Final Four? He wins in uh, Greece. Yeah, no, no, but I will say, give me UConn minus the points. Final game of the night, Missouri State's getting 14 and a half at St. Mary's. Cocktail napkin spit out a confusing number here for me. I think we lock up St. Mary's. They're on fucking fire. I'm going to keep <laughs> writing this until I lose. Give me St. Mary's minus 14 and a half against Missouri State. Let's go. What are you doing? I'm here, with buddy? you there. I'm going to lay the points at the Gales. Uh, Cocktail Napkin said Missouri State plus 10, but you just look at their last two performances against mid majors 71 34 over Middle Tennessee, 92 56 over Northern Kentucky. Yes. I'm taking the Gales. Lock it up, folks. And uh, what is he talking about? You're off, you, dude. You're off in the chat. I appreciate you, uh, Daniel, but no, he won a national championship at Louisville ten years ago, <laughs> and then he had to leave a couple years later, and he won in Greece a championship. He's arguably the best coach left in college basketball. Arguably, I kind of think he is, though. Anyway. Uh, folks want to say, have a wonderful holidays. What's our best play? Noah, what's our best play? Ooh. I mean, there's a lot. I, I actually love these. tomorrow's card. Cause on, on the shows, <laughs> on the shows, my, what's your best play? I, I think I'm like, Oh, and four this week, but yesterday I went five and one. There you go. Tout that I, shit. I, Tout yeah, that I, shit. I, 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 I don't. I don't like this. I think we all picked UCLA last night. That's true, and we ate shit. And yeah. uh, I think my best play. 
I mean, I like all of them, but I mean, I'm going to say the best play <laughs> is I think long Island's covering. <laughs> I'm serious. I know it's shtick. But I'm that saying like that number's too. off. That number's <laughs> off. All right. No, if I was to say one, shocks. yeah, that yeah. was it. That's the fucking one. The fucking shocks. Uh, cash cow. All right. They're going to go into to Maryland and get that dub. Uh, folks, <laughs> thank you so much for rocking with us. Uh, we, we honestly, we hope, I don't care what country you're in. I don't care. Whatever. We're, we are grateful that you listen to us and, uh, yeah, we hope you have a wonderful holidays. If you don't celebrate Christmas, all good. We hope you have a wonderful holidays, whatever the fuck you celebrate. Oh, if Casey's you don't celebrate saying I picked Marquette anything. last night, which they ran over. Oh, Georgetown. there you go. There right. you go. Yeah. But me and Matt, right. I think Long took Island, UCLA. my favorite yeah. pick tonight. Yeah. Yeah. And look, we were grateful wherever the fuck you're listening from. If you're not celebrating Christmas, have a good fucking day. All right. Have a great day. Have a great moment with your family, whatever. We appreciate you all. Give Noah Beanick a follow on Twitter at Noah B 77 underscore Moneyline Mac. Who's probably passed out, yeah. passed out I, I, somewhere. I don't know if you said it already, but 200 live viewers at four 50 in the morning. It's yeah, a, that's fantastic. Thank we you. Appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. Chat. Uh, Moneyline Max on Twitter at Moneyline underscore Mac. Uh, I'm on Twitter at the Colby D. The college basketball experience is on Twitter at TCE on SGPN. Folks, if you can, subscribe on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. Pass it along if you can. That helps us. We're trying to grow this thing, and uh, it always helps us. We appreciate that. If you can, also, five star review on iTunes always helps as well. And uh, But even if you, if you if you don't do any of that shit, you know, I, I wish you would, but regardless, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Thank you for rocking with us. Have a wonderful holidays. Noah might be back tomorrow night. I won't be for the next couple of days. Cause the, all we have is those Hawaii games going on. Yeah. Uh, it's, we have the picks page. Yeah. We, we've got four games tomorrow or uh, four games Sunday, I believe. And then no games, Christmas, no games, 26, no games, 27. So don't take these yeah. games for granted. Yeah. So folks, thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy new year. Happy holidays. Thank you for rocking with us. Check out the sports gambling podcast. We'll be back. Uh, I'm actually going to miss talking to you guys. So I don't know. I guess I'll get drunker. All right. That's the only the way <laughs> I could think about it is like, well, I don't have to do the show. Give me that seventh Jack and Coke. The seventh Appreciate you guys. Seventh, eighth, 75th fucking nice. have a good have a good holiday folks. enjoy the moment we'll be dead in 100 years all right sometimes i think people forget that all right this is the college basketball experience signing off thank you so much until next time this is the college basketball experience you better start thinking about yours and we out of here Thinking about the good shit the minute that I seen your grill again, it made me good trip, good dog to mind back like dog but wind that man. I didn't get mad when you near me hit the can back. But the coming song was strong. Now my shit's coming along, you know the song. The truth is I'm pretty much on five again. It's eating up for real, I'm alive again. Uh, and that's the attraction factor. Vancouver, Michigan with my rap disaster. Yeah, you know you want it, how you want it. No need to trip, cause I got it, dog got it. It's all your and the extras too All the super music and the sex for hope uh-huh. Just get it straight cause he caught me in a good mood Let me demonstrate what this time of year could do Yeah, sing it